So in early 2012, Stanford University began an initiative known as She++. Its objective was to inspire women all around the world to adopt computers and technology and to create more and more female technologists around the globe. They saw this fundamental disparity between males and females when it comes to adopting computers and technology. Google also recently launched a similar initiative known as the Made with Code initiative. They also saw this fundamental gap and realized that women are not well represented in creative fields such as research labs, Android development, etc., especially in organizations that are enablers of technology. My talk today is about empowering women in India through the use of computers. It is about taking inspiration from this global issue and addressing the challenging and deeper aspects which we face here in India. My vision is to take computers to the grassroots level, to educate, train and share the know-how of computers with women but more importantly to enrich their livelihood. My vision is to transform their lives. Before I take up the role of computers for women, an important question stems, why computers? For me, computers offer the lowest common denominator that touches every aspect of our human lives. It offers an opportunity for each one to enhance their creative abilities, to enhance their problem-solving abilities. Its activities range from design to education to entrepreneurial to creating new things and thus create a broad database for people to expand their forte. The most wondrous aspect for computers is the ease with which one can operate them. I mean, I look at my little sisters who can barely speak the internet, uh, the English alphabet. They uh, search up the net and play games. My grandmother took to Facebook and WhatsApp within a matter of two weeks. And so this shows that the mystery and stigma that surrounds this field is nothing but a mental block. I would next like to touch on the plight of women faced in India. Women in India, the history of women in India rather, has been quite eventful. What started as an equal status for both men and women transition to its low points during the medieval period. I mean, women faced dowry deaths, murders, rape, infanticide. And while the constitution of uh, India does guarantee that women will have an equal stat status as that of men, India is considered as the fourth most dangerous country when it comes to the safety of women. Such societal problems have led to very limited opportunities for females from a very young age. It is of no surprise that the female literacy rate in India is way less than that of men. Issues, issues pertaining to not having proper sanitary facilities in schools, the gender biases in curriculum further add to these challenges. The girls just have to stay at home and are ultimately deprived of education. Swami Vivekananda was once asked about what could be done about this problem and his answer was just educate the women. The rest will follow. At the root of bringing this change are three fundamental issues. Poverty, illiteracy and ownership of resources. In 1996, a study was conducted by Subha Rao which suggested that if women were educated there would have been a 69% decline in female deaths within a decade. Computers can play a tremendous role in educating women. There are women in middle and lower class families who possess a very high entrepreneurial spirit. They are however limited due to the limited resources. The working capital, a requirement to work from home is necessary these days. Computers used as an educational tool can not only help nurture the right skills for women, but also bridge the gap between talent and possibilities. The empowerment of women in India is about the computers, is about addressing the fundamental issues, illiteracy and lack of skills, but more importantly, through them, bring the societal change which we want to see in our country. I truly believe in what Malcolm X had said. If you educate a man, you educate 
one person. But if you educate a woman, you educate and liberate a whole nation. It seems in my mind that the timing for such an initiative to take off is just right. With a new government in place, with our Prime Minister Mr. Narendra Modi, with his earlier role as the Chief Minister of Gujarat, he has had some success with women-centric issues. One of his initiatives in Gujarat, Mission Mangalam, has been a huge success. A total of 30 lakh women were enrolled in this program, sustaining a business of 1,700 crores. Such initiatives now need to be taken place on a way lar larger scale. And now I provide some ideas which we can use computers to actually educate people around the world. Most women in India prefer to work from home. From the confines of their homes, women can manage their businesses by reaching out to potential customers using Facebook pages. As most of us are aware, the scope and reach of Facebook is huge. Thus, by adopting technology, women have not only eliminated the middlemen, they also have wider reach. Computers can also avail rural microfinance and thus enhance the GDP of our country. With internet shopping becoming the new mantra, imagine the large customer base women in, involved in small-scale cottage industries from rural areas actually contribute to the GDP of India. Just with the click of a few buttons, they will be able to supply their wares to a huge audience located across the country. Source for Change, SFC, is a BPO from Bagar, Rajasthan. It was set up by Piramal Foundation. Here, 10 women with 10th grade education were brought and were um, in charge of back-end development. Now, this foundation has brought it up to a network of all women rural BPO with more than 1,50,000 women. Another such business idea is that of providing home-cooked meals to office-going professionals. Gone are the days where one would stay at their parental home with their parents and go to work. People have to travel, companies send them to different towns for different jobs. And so this business can really flourish. In my view, the PPP initiatives shall have to be put in place. We are well aware that in India, there is a significant, significant shortage of teachers, of 1.2 million teachers. 17% of rural schools have just one teacher. This gap can be bridged using um, technologies like Skype. The teachers can interact with many classes at the same time. We are well aware that India has the youngest workforce in the world. The strong indigenous software capability with the likes of TCS, Infosys, Wipro and many other smaller companies can easily address the linguistic, education and other specific skills needed in collaboration with the government. India has already proven to the world that a 1 lakh rupee car that is Nano, Tata Nano can be produced which was previously thought to be impossible. I'd like to quote Vincent Van Gogh. Great things are done by a series of small things brought together. For this, each and every one of us will have to do their specific bit to make this a huge success. We come from a nation where goddesses Durga, Kali, Saraswati are worshipped. So let us awaken the Durga within us, the Kali within us, the Saraswati within us, and be the change we want to see in the world. Thank you.